welcome party people this is the intro for today's uh Fazettel session where i try to get back into the book uh, i recorded the last video on tuesday i think and process it pretty quickly because i was away last um, weekend on a conference and i'm still pretty weary from from all the stuff that happened during the last four days and i have uh, no clue where i stopped so this processing session might be uh, a little bit confused maybe it's also more interesting because i don't think in terms of the book but in in terms of programming and look up many different things that that, that don't seem uh, to be related at first who knows i certainly don't um so Today we're going to process chapter three when less of the same is more and this chapter is uh, Darn it's uh, yeah, for 25 pages long. Um, I think it's the longest yet Well, maybe I'm not finishing it either. We'll see. So let's get started. See you on the other side uh, with David Epstein's Range Chapter 3. But before we get started with the real action, I want to tell you that I misspelled Spearman and Spearson. The real name is Spearson, and I said Spearman the last time, and uh, the opening quote contained the gold, apparently. I fixed this in the real note. It's now pretending the world is like golf and chess is comforting, not gold and chess, which made absolutely no sense. But little did I know that this time would be a weird time. A short session, I think it was two breaks and a bit, so less than two hours, way less than two hours. And you will see why, because this chapter is not good. If you paid attention uh, to me flipping through the book, you will notice that there were three or four markings, uh, or less. Oh, I think it was three. And this is uh, my basic summary of the whole chapter. And it won't change that much from this starting point. I will, of course, expand a lot, but this is uh, all I will discover in terms of the main points that are interesting. And here I'm already expanding because the correct page is open. It's the last page of the chapter, apparently. Um, where the most interesting stuff is hidden, which makes me nervous when I think about it in hindsight. I also found something uh, 10 pages earlier about a coach who was saying something, uh, and I wanted to take note about it, and we will get back to each and every of these uh, parts later in the session. But first, I want to tell you that the thing that I discovered is that the source for this particular article that I was uh, processing is from National Geographic. Uh, that's not a real scientific source, Mr. Epstein, uh, who is citing a lot of sources in other parts, especially in the introduction. And maybe you remember me complaining about the many endnotes uh, that were in the introduction chapter. Look at session one of this series to look it up. Here was pasting contents from the notes that I took into a new Zettel note uh, with the forward linking method. We discussed this. Uh, place the link in square brackets, click it, and then create the note that you uh, are landing at, which is uh, not existing at first. We discussed this in the previous chapters, uh, sessions, sorry. So here I'm reading through the National Geographic article and find that there's no quotes, no citations either, because National Geographic is a not. A scientific journal is there, Mr. Epstein. So I resort to look up this stuff by Mr. Limb, comma, Charles, myself, and find the full text of the study that both National Geographic and Mr. Epstein are relying on, to my surprise. Yeah, so Mr. Epstein didn't even Google for the full text, but just stopped at the National Geographic thing. Yeah, here's the citation for the original article. Mr. Epstein, if you're watching, you feel free to use it. It is available online in an open access journal. But because I have no clue about the neurophysiology and uh, brain 
things that Limp is talking about. I'm just taking out a couple of uh, quotations here and there that sound interesting and promising to further research if I ever feel I want to. Which brings me to the first break. Yeah, and fully refreshed, I um, get back to my desk and wonder oh, what what was what was I doing uh, just now? And ah, uh, yeah, I remember Mr. Epstein was quoting National Geographic. Yeah, that was it. And I did the actual uh, m labor of looking up the source that is citable. That's a real source. That's um, not citing someone else from an interview, you know, like science. Well, here's the final note. And this is, uh, um, yeah, where I want to point out that if you have no clue and are not sure about the things, even scientists use conditionals and not factual sounding statements. And this is what I end up using in the Epstein note to reference all this. What I found out. Yeah. Up next, I'm flipping through more stuff, looking up things, and uh, find out that yeah, there this this is this is madness, you know. Uh, the thing that Epstein is saying there is uh, that Cucini told him about something. Uh, is is telling someone a proper citation? I mean, if they just talk about stuff, okay. Well, but. Uh, it's yeah, well, he's a journalist. This is this is a book by a journalist. This is not a scientific paper. So maybe maybe I'm expecting too much. Oh well, and <laughs> there's no original source where Ian Yates is quoted about the parents requesting too much from their children. And I do think this is an interesting problem, you know, like parents expecting their children to perform on world class levels as children. But uh, anyway, here's the next note um, that I'm creating. Self-taught musicians, jazz musicians, uh, sound more interesting. Uh, that's that's a knowledge atom. Atom? How do you pronounce this? No, it's a, a single piece of knowledge that I could extract and put into another note, which I'm doing here and uh, correcting the link. And then, you know, this is what I end up with. A little quote and uh, citation. Um, but whoops, another typo, Kecini instead of a Cucini. I will correct this later. Um, so self-taught jazz musicians sound more interesting than those from school, um, allegedly because they experiment more and, quote, learn to solve problems. That is what Cucini says, which is not backed up by anything, of course. Of course! Yeah. That's the level of uh, science we're doing here. And, oh, I mean, I can't really, I can't really blame Mr. Epstein for uh, not. Uh, well, of course, I do blame Mr. Epstein for not doing proper work. But this is not a scientific paper, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, just a book that tries to bring home a point. I was looking for relations to other texts that exist in my archive, which apparently don't exist. So I was looking for ideas what to do next. I mean, I. I apparently exhausted the whole chapter already. Uh, well, you know, there's this thing about the tiger mom and, and how discipline uh, leads to success and that you have to teach your children to to you know, behave well. well. I was taking note of this. Maybe later this will become relevant or I want to research this myself with a inline hashtag, hashtag parenting, because uh, I'm not extracting this into its own note, at least not yet. And so with all this free time, uh, because there's nothing I can process, I'm writing commentary. Why is improvisation an important topic for Epstein? Why is this chapter here? What's the purpose of this chapter? And how can I make sense of all this? And with a thought process started this way, I'm trying to cross-reference. I noticed, well, there was this part about geniuses and child prodigies, about savants back in uh, session two. and. I want to connect this with my question here because I see a vague arc of uh, improvisation to um, leading good or interesting or life in excellence. And here I was 
putting an inline link. You see, it's uh, longer than usual because I want to emphasize that this is uh, temporary. And uh, if you click on it, you well land in this this very note, but the search term is far at the top. So this is just another hack to use search for cross links. But now I am exhausting everything I find again. I don't want to refactor the whole note because I still didn't learn a lot of new things. Yeah, but there must be something to do. Something regarding Epstein's findings. Hmm. Well, here is a compressed version of me spending 10 minutes commenting on something from chapter 2, which is the last episode. And I'm expanding the commentary because I, I noticed that my criticism is not perfect. It's still not perfect now, but now it's more complete because it has a, well, it has an end. This, this, is, this is what I end up with. Uh, why the citations support only parts of what Epstein might say and a couple of new thoughts that regard Epstein's way to cite stuff. I decide to call it a day at this point and make a new, um, new image from the current state of the structure node. But spoiler alert, there will be more things to do because the video is not quite over yet. Here I'm trying to uh, highlight the parts that I've added today. And I notice that um, you know there's this giftedness does not imply genius. The the note from f two weeks ago, and the self-taught jazz musician thing. It's it's even close together. It's mocking me because it's so close together in this graph, this visualization. <sighs> there's no way. There's no way out. I have to do it. I have to extract this idea into its own note, you know. I have to take this, this part, this commentary that I just added a couple of minutes ago and extract it. There. New ID, forward link, copy paste. Bam! I extracted the commentary into its own note and there is the link target, the inline link target, former inline link target, because now it's going to be extracted as well. I'm deleting the seconds to match the ID scheme. I can safely do this because I haven't written a lot of stuff at minute 46 of uh, 5 o'clock. Then clicking on this link puts me to the place where I'm going to paste the contents that you know from before at some more citations and there it is that's as far as I got here but I figured well if the quote from the last time is so popular with Epstein maybe it's popular with other people too but uh, you know I found a source but it has a typo and someone is wrong on the internet without me notifying him no I'm going to email Eric right now, right here, and uh, tell him about the correct quotation on page 32 in Epstein's book. This random website on the internet doesn't have anything else that pertains Epstein's book range, but I found one part of the website and right below the quote interesting, and I took note of this analogy that Mr. Eric Barker uh, did come up with which is that it's like weightlifting. If you don't have enough stress in learning, that's his premise, uh, you don't learn. Like with weights, they have to be heavy enough for you to progress. I'm not quite sure about all of this that he's saying there, but you know, triggered me to take note. I'm finalizing the connection node that is uh, that is the real commentary here and there you are innovation doesn't come from expertise there 
has to be a secret sauce that we haven't discovered yet as far as Epstein goes. But I'm quite content. And looking at the new visualization next to the old one, you already see here is the network of the new connections that are created. You already see that the uh, Gestalt has changed of the network with just one little refactoring. And this node in the outer rim of the network uh, has been pushed out even farther. And with this revelation, we will be ending this session. It was a quickie, wasn't it? Because there wasn't much in the 20 something pages in Epstein's book. Ah, well, I hope, I sure hope that next time there will be more rewarding sources to extract. But Epstein's book so far is, is a hit and miss thing. Some chapters are very densely cited, some less so. And this is one of those that are rather disappointing. But well, thank you all for watching. I hope you found out something interesting this time. And I also hope that you have a great rest of your day.